art scene, I'm your host, Lyle Snow. Tonight, I'm going to start, start with what goes on behind the scenes with women who work in television and is actually an audio book, Just the Funny Parts by Nell Scovell. She's won awards. She, she really uh, had a reputation and she wanted to direct uh, a woman at 40 is considered over the hill. A man is just hitting his stride. So it's really interesting to see what she goes through. And she was asked to write some jokes for President Obama for the White House Correspondents Dinner. So she, uh, he actually used two of them, and one of them was, now that there are three women on the Supreme Court, uh, we can have a rope jumping contest, which really spoke to me because I was very active in, jump, in ro jumping rope in Brooklyn. And this really struck me because I also read the audio book of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And she starts uh, introducing herself to the Senate by saying, I'm from Brooklyn, and yes, I uh, jumped rope. I think they took it out of, of some of the clips they showed. Anyway, she also went to my high school, so did uh, Chuck Schumer and Bernie Sanders. So uh, I, I've been asked to tell stories about myself, and I thought I would tell the following story because it shows how you really, if you have a diverse group of people, uh, working on something, you really en enrich the material. Well, not many women were in science in the late 40s when I was. And uh, in my senior year at Brooklyn College, I took biochemistry. And my teacher was working on a project uh, using adenosine triphosphate. What it is, is triphosphate, there are three phosphate groups. And when a muscle contracts, it gives off one of the phosphate groups and becomes adenosine diphosphate. I don't know much about what he was doing, but he asked a couple of students to uh, try to produce some adenosine triphosphate for him. He was getting like a 30% yield by taking a small warm-blooded animal and using the leg muscle. And so when he showed us what to do, he kept saying, you really lose a lot of material uh, if it's warm. So keep plunging your hands into ice water, plunge the muscle into ice water, and on and on and on. Well, I lived near Sheepshead Bay, but my family had uh, clams were not part of our cuisine, and neither uh, my lab partner also had never tasted clams. So I thought, a clam is cold muscle tissue, totally, just the shell and the muscle. And so I said, how about going to Sheepshead Bay and we'll get some clams. Well, neither of us had ever tasted clams. So we went to a clam bar and we ate clams. We came back with a sack of clams and voila, we had like more than a 90% yield from doing this. So sometimes an oblique different view on a subject is very useful. I also think I used it in my art uh, because they were taking a computer apart at, at the University of Maryland. 
And I had just gotten to a bat mitzvah, and with the reading of the Torah, I thought, unlike uh, scenes of Christian martyrs and saints, the Torah is all words. And here we have arrived at computers that have knowledge or information anyway uh, transmitted with words. So I took a, a cardboard that they wrapped fabric in and I stuck some sculpture tools and it looked like a Torah. And so with these small computer parts, I embedded that in the Torah and I made 30 or 40 and they were in a retrospective at the Washington Hebrew Congregation. Also, uh, when the tsunami hit Sendai, Japan on March 11, 2011, where we had lived in the 80s, I, I looked at the oil painting and I thought the drips really look like a tsunami and the bigger circles look like the Fukushima power plant. And there was a lot of discussion about that because that stayed radioactive for years and they were questioning whether it was a good idea to, uh, to continue using radioactive material. Reality shows are anything, but they don't deal with reality. They present a, a pretend idea that's not really what's going on. And I'll start with the Duggars, uh, which has been wiped off the screen thanks to Josh Duggar. This is the show that was called 19 Kids and Counting. And it, uh, they were trying for a 20th, and look at that, isn't this wonderful? This family manages 19 kids and everything works. And you who just have a couple of kids, what are you complaining about? Miracle of miracles. Well, it's not a miracle. It was removed, first of all, because first born Josh, who at this point was married and had two toddlers and his wife was pregnant, so they were going to continue doing what his parents were doing. And I felt like saying to him, if all of them continue, we're going to have like 400 Duggars. And I was going to say that uh, ha, with the saying, it takes a village to raise a child, doesn't mean that you're supposed to create a whole village of 400 people. But anyway, the way it works is they have the older girls who supposedly are home homeschooled uh, do child care, cooking, cleaning, and laundry. They even have a five-year-old dragging a, a laundry basket around collecting dirty clothes. So they exploit the children. They go to Japan. So isn't this wonderful? They right? travel with 19 children and enrich their lives. And they stand in the street asking passerbys uh, where there was a dollar store and send the girls with the little kids to buy things in the dollar store. <laughs> and in Israel, they didn't understand the currency. They also went shopping. So this brings me to all these programs are very secretive about the contribution of the, uh, of the TV station. Clearly, that's what's helping them survive. So it, they're, they're not honest and upfront about what's happening. Then on to uh, Sister Wives, where he, uh, he's, he likes to sit and schmooze with his wives. He wants more children. He has 18 children. Why does he want more children? He never spends time with his children. Go for a walk with three or four older children and ask them about what's bothering them. 
and the Alliance built some decisions about, uh, about moving. So suddenly these teenagers have to leave their friends and the, the fourth wife with young children is in tears because she's expected to load a truck herself instead of hiring a moving van. Uh, so if they don't hear again, they don't talk about money. Each of the wives has a five bedroom house. The, uh, the first wife has one child who is left for college, but she needs it because uh, she's always wanted eight children. So it, it, it just not honest, not real with reality. Uh, and on to 90 day fiance, which I like because I like to look at whether gender makes a difference in the way people behave. Are men better at understanding other cultures or women? Here again, finances uh, are a big factor. So it, it's just anything but reality. It's just fake, fake news, which brings me to uh, a book about Orwell and Churchill, a strange combination. Uh, so here we have everyone, of course, has heard about Churchill. And he's the guy who couldn't get into school. There were like three military schools, and he had to try three times to get into the easiest one to get into, which was cavalry. And that's because not everyone had, was rich enough to have horses, and you have to have be skilled with horses in order to gain acceptance. And they said about Orwell that we would never have heard of him, except that when he wrote 1984, instead of calling it Oceana, where he was uh, a radio news broadcaster, he flipped the numbers and called it 1984, uh, asking what are, what's the world going to be like in, in 1984, and that's what put him on the map. And now they're saying that because of double speak and Big Brother, uh, he might be one of the most important writers of the 20th century. Anyway, I had said I was going to tell a joke, so next time I'll tell a joke about an elephant sandwich. I'll see you next time on the art scene. This is like this.